Today on Real Garage, we tackle one of my shop optimization projects. And to celebrate the end of season five, I'm giving away some of my favorite gear. More details on that later, so make sure you watch throughout the video. You don't want to miss any of this good stuff. Well, actually, this stuff is mine. We'll send out some different ones. As with most of my projects, they solve an issue that I'm having. And today, I'm building some special engine cradles. My two main problems are that I work on multiple types of engines, which require different cradles. And typical cradles don't store very easily. So I've designed a custom universal engine cradle that folds down flat when it's not in use. These can then be stacked or even hung on a wall. For my purposes, universal means that it can accommodate most V8 engines, like small and big block General Motors, including the LS versions, Ford, and Mopar. I'm making sure that my stands are heavy duty. The standard cradles I've purchased in the past were only about 14 gauge steel. I'm using 8th inch stuff, since a fully dressed big block can go north of 700 pounds. My supplies are 5 feet of 1x1x8 one by one by inch square tubing, 5 feet of 1x2x8 one by by inch square tubing, 4 feet of 1 inch by 8 inch wall round tubing. I'm using DOM. 1 foot of 3 quarter inch by 8 inch wall, about 4 inches of 5 8 by 8 inch wall, 4 inches of 2 by 2 by 8 inch angle, 4 feet of 3 quarter inch threaded rod, 6 3 quarter inch nuts, 6 3 quarter inch jam nuts, 2 half inch by 2 and a half inch bolts with lock nuts, and 2 half inch by 6 inch long bolts with lock nuts, and some eighth inch plate steel. My dimensions will be 28 inches square. Start by cutting the 1 by 2 into 2 pieces 26 inches long and two of the one by one pieces to 28 inches long. Deburr the cuts and grind the weld area of each tube and wipe with acetone. This will give you better weld results. I'm doing a combination of TIG and MIG for this project. You could definitely use either process. Now just square the parts on the table and clamp in place. Warning. Read and follow all labels and your owner's manuals. I like to tack the outside corners first, then the inside. Even though this is mild steel tubing, I'm using 1 16th ER80 SD2 filler metal. You can use standard ER70S2, but I like the way the ER80 performs and looks. Gotta love this cordless foot pedal. Nothing to get it caught on. I'm grinding the welds flat on the bottom of the frame so that the caster wheels will mount flush. One thing I like about TIG welding is there's not a lot of material to remove to get it to grind flat. Now let's take the four inch by eighth inch flat stock and cut five inch and a quarter strips. Then cut those in half so you get 10 pieces that are 2 inches by inch and a quarter. Drill a half inch hole in the center. Then rounding the corners off one of the long sides is optional. Okay, so the 1x2 square tubing is the sides. 
and the one by one is going to be the front and rear. So now take two of your tabs and starting from the back, mount one tab flush with the back of the one by one and mount the other one two inches forward. And that's going to be an outside to outside dimension. So basically you'll have an inch and three quarters in the middle. And you're going to do that on both sides. just spot stitching the outside and then I'll continuously weld the inside. I've got my Multimatic auto set for eighth inch but I did fine tune the adjustment down to 16.8 volts and 289 inches per minute of wire feed speed. So one thing I like about the Multimatic is you still fine-tune it even in the auto range. Then from the front of each side weld a tab on the end and then a second tab five and a half inches out again outside dimensions and then a third tab five and a half inches from that one outside to outside dimensions. Now I took the one inch tubing and cut two pieces 10 inches and two pieces to 12 inches. Then deburred the ends. So earlier, I said I was using DOM tubing. Let's quick discuss what DOM actually is. So DOM tubing is a much higher quality and stronger tubing than standard electric weld tubing. DOM, which is drawn over mandrel, also commonly referred to as seamless tubing, even though it does actually have a seam and it's welded. But the drawn over mandrel process blends that seam, making it virtually unnoticeable, it creates a consistent wall thickness and a stronger tube. Here, let me show you. DOM electric weld. You can see the seam easily with the electric weld where the DOM is fairly seamless. The seam on the electric weld does protrude into the tube whereas the DOM it is perfectly round. Okay I'm using it here because I'll be sliding this threaded rod inside the DOM tubing and the seam with electric weld could obstruct the tight fit of say another tube. This threaded rod or even a bolt. Now cut the three quarter inch tubing into two one and three quarter inch long pieces and two one and a quarter inch pieces and deburr the ends. Also take the 5 8 tubing and cut two pieces two inches long. Now take the one inch tubing and drill a three quarter inch hole at one end. I'm using a carbide cutter, but a standard hole saw works too. I'm also not cutting a complete hole, just about two thirds. So basically they end up looking like this. Make sure you use plenty of lubrication and go slow. You don't want the teeth of your hole saw grabbing the edge of the tube. I like to use the tap magic. In preparation for welding, grind the plating off a of one end of four three quarter inch nuts 
and prep each end of the one inch tubes you just cut and drilled. Okay, to weld the nut on the tube, I like to take the threaded rod, run a nut down it, and use the threaded rod as its own clamp for the uh, weld nut. That'll keep the nut centered during welding. Just tacking first. Try not to use too much power that you uh, burn through the tube and actually weld your uh, weld your threaded rod in place. So once I get it tacked, I actually just loosen it up a little bit. And this is my poor man's rotisserie. I'm actually just going to do a uh, fusion weld. The nut has plenty of material on it that I can just uh, weld it and roll it onto the tube. like that. Okay, center and weld the three quarter inch tubes into your drilled ends. The 10 inch tubes get your inch and three quarter and the 12 inch ones get the inch and a quarter. Also, make sure you pull that scale off of these things. This is what it looks like from the mill. This is what they look like after I pulled the scale off with some 100 grit emery cloth. Cut the threaded rod into two 10 inch lengths and two 12 inch. Okay, these 5 8 tubes are gonna get welded to the top of the 12 inch threaded rods. I did have to make an adjustment to the 5 8 tubes though. The eighth inch wall thickness makes it perfect for 3 8 bolts which is really only good for older style engines. Newer engines use metric fasteners and the 10 millimeter is pretty common. A 3 8 bolt is 0.375 inches and a 10 millimeter is about 0.390. So I used a letter X drill bit, which is 0.395 to 0.397 and I reamed the center of the tube out so that it'll accept both the metric and the 3 8 bolt. I'm using MIG to weld this to the threaded rod. I have the Multimatic 220 set for 17 volts and 295 inches per minute of wire feed speed. I'm using 030 ER70S6 wire. I bolted the threaded rod through my table and used a clamp to hold it square. Now I cut two inch and three quarter pieces off the two by two angle. Drilled a three quarter inch hole in the center of one side and a 13 30 second hole three quarters of an inch from the top of the other side. These will be the rear engine block mounts. So I decided to put caster wheels on my frame. 
I know a lot of people don't need wheels, but I like to be mobile. I found these two inch casters that have a combined working weight of 800 pounds, so it's perfect for this. I also like them because they're double locking, which means when you lock them, the wheel doesn't spin and the caster doesn't turn. So let's put this thing together. All right, for your 10 inch threaded rods, spin one of your thin lock nuts on first and then put a standard nut on, which I tack welded in place so that about five eighths of an inch of thread is still showing. I tacked it because it makes it easier to adjust them. Just run it in all the way until the, it hits the jam nut. Then take your engine block mount, slide it on and secure it with the other jam nut. And secure them with a half inch lock nut. They don't have to be tight. Because you still want to be able to move them. There. It's got to be snug. And same with the 12 inch ones. So this is how you can adjust for different mounting points on your engine. You just slide it sideways or move it over to the next area and you can increase or decrease the length of the threaded rod. And I know you're going to say is, well what if I want to use my standard motor mount? Well, that is what these are for. So you can build a number of these things depending upon what type of engines you have. Now it mounts right to the motor mount. This one here I made for small and big block Chevrolets and the LS motors. There we go. Goal number one, falls down flat. Before I try it out on our motor, let's talk about our giveaways. We're giving away some of my favorite stuff, like safety gear. We've got face shields respirator filters, welding gloves and sleeves, even my go-to Digital Elite welding helmet, or some real garage swag. But the best thing is the Spectrum 375 plasma cutter. Entering is simple. All you gotta do is subscribe or be subscribed. Leave me a comment. Maybe you got a question, or an idea for a project you'd like to see me tackle in a future episode. Or how about just a thumbs up if you like our content. Tell them about the form. Oh yeah, and make sure you click the link in our description and fill out the short form so we know how to get a hold of you if you win. You got until June 6, 2023 to enter. There you go, I like it. Thanks for watching the end of season five. And remember, make sure you enter for the giveaway. You only got till June 6, 2023.